Thank you for joining Brothers of the Word because brother, you need the Word. <laughs> Praise God. Well, we welcome all of you joining us by airjesus.com. Those of you joining us by television, stay tuned to today's message. We're doing part two, something we shared last week entitled Living with Purpose. Living with purpose. Open your Bible, if you will, over to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, is the text we begin and we use as our foundational text in Scripture, Ephesians, chapter 5. And we'll just read, last time we read 13 through 17, but we'll just start at verse 15 through 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17. And I'm going to actually, you can read it in whatever translation you have, but I'm going to actually just read it directly from the Amplified Bible. It reads so much clearer from the Amplified Bible, so you can just read along in the King James or whatever version you may have, but from the Amplified Bible, we'll begin with verse 15, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. It says, look carefully then how you walk, live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. Another translation reads that last part. It says, don't live carelessly, unthinkingly, but make sure you understand what the master wants. And so we're using as a subject, living with purpose. Part two, living with purpose. Purpose. I also like something the Apostle Paul said. You don't have to turn there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26, in one translation, he says this. He says, I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. And so we began to talk about last time that we're not to float through life aimlessly. We're not to just fritter away our lives on meaningless things and just live vicariously and just following, you know, whatever our feelings dictate and just, you know, we're just kind of going with the flow and blowing through life and don't really have any real meaning or purpose or understanding no real aim, no real goals, just, just kind of floating wherever the wind blows us. So we're not just to uh, float through life like that. We said last time that some people live for a variety of different reasons. Some people live just to eat. I have a, I have a, a distant relative like that. She lives just, to, well, I'm not gonna say just to eat, but eating is really important to her. <laughs> If you ever want to get her to go somewhere with you, just mention that there will be food served and she will be there. I mean, she drives miles. She, I, I've, I've known her to drive 50, 60 miles just to, just to eat. So she loves to eat. And I've been in different places eating with her and I see her at the end of the meal. I see her with a napkin and she be putting a, a drumstick, chicken drumstick in that napkin. And, she be fixing her little stuff up to go, you know. But she loves, she loves to eat. And I have picked at her for years for her enjoyment of food. But that's, I can tell that she, you know, she lives to eat. She gets a great kick out of eating. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think we should enjoy some food. But 
Don't let that be your single purpose. Don't let that be your single purpose and your main aim in life. I remember I used to have a coworker, and this guy, he only lived for the weekends. He used to talk all week long about, man, what are you going to do this weekend? What's, what's, what you got going on this week? He loved the weekend. He lived for the weekend. That was his whole purpose in life, making it to the weekend. But folks, that's, you know, that's not the way life is supposed to be lived. We're supposed to have some purpose in life, not just living to consume resources, just to eat and just to breathe and to take up space, but we're to live because we have purpose, because there is something bigger than ourselves that we believe in. There's something bigger than us. And when you tap into the, the bigger picture that you are here as a part of a plan that's bigger than you are, you are part of something that's much larger than you are, that you are inextricably bound to the divine purpose of Almighty God. And he has called you at this time into this place. He has gifted you with a certain set of abilities and gifts and talents and a certain physical makeup, mental makeup. He has designed you and he has put you here not by accident, not haphazardly, but he has put you here to be a part of fulfilling a divine purpose in your life that's a part of the bigger picture, the grand scheme of things. And so it's really an awesome thought to think that you're here for something bigger than yourself. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're here for something bigger than yourself. You are here for, you're here for divine purpose. You're here for divine purpose. You're not here just to live for the weekend. Not here just to live to eat, but you're here for a divine purpose. Someone said that death is not the great tragedy, but a life with no purpose is. Death is not the great tragedy, but a life with no purpose is. Someone else said, an unused life is an early death. An unused life is an early death. And I want you all to think about this. One day, you will have to stand before God. And I want you to think about this. Is God going to say to you, well done? Or is he going to say to you, well? <laughs> we don't want to stand before God and God is scratching his head saying, well. <laughs> no, we want, we want God to say, well done. Yes. Well done. A life well done. Live. Rick Warren said this. He said, God's going to ask you two questions when you stand before him. He said, he's going to ask you, number one, what did you do with my son Jesus? Number two, he's going to ask you, what did you do with the gifts I gave you? What did you do with the gifts I gave you, the talents I gave you, the resources I gave you, the energy I gave you? The ideas I gave you. What did you do with the life I gave you? What did you do with the time I gave you? What did you do with the money I gave you? What did you do with the resources I gave you? There's going to, folks, we have, to, we have to be accountable for these lives that we're living. We have to be accountable. So God's going to ask us those two questions. I heard Bishop Dale said, he says, one prayer that he has started to pray is this. Lord, help me to do all the things I will wish I had done when I stand before you. Yes. Lord, help me to do all of the things that I will wish I had done when I stand before you. Folks, get that prayer in your mind. Get that in your heart. One day you're going to have to stand before God. Lord, pray that prayer. Lord, 
Help me to do now, while you got the time, while you got life, help me to do all the things I will wish I had done when I stand before you. I read something interesting by an unknown author and it says, do more than just talk, say something. Do more than think, reflect. Do more than listen, understand. Do more than hear, listen. Do more than read, absorb. Do more than look, observe. Do more than touch, feel. Do more than exist, live. In other words, it's saying live with purpose. Live with purpose. Live with purpose. Live with purpose. If you, are, if you find yourself bored with life, if you... You know, if you don't have a burning desire to get up every morning and to get started, you probably, you probably have lost sight of purpose for your life. If you've lost your zeal and if you've lost your excitement about life and if you can't wait to get started every day, some people live their lives, the Bible talks about this, some people live their lives where in the morning they wish it was night. And at night they wish it was morning. Dreading life. And the Bible says you, you've lost sight of purpose. If you're not bounding out of bed with excitement and joy and gladness where you can't wait to get started in accomplishing and doing things that God has called you and commissioned you to do. If your life isn't filled with a great sense of purpose. I like something that I read by Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer said this. She says, nothing energizes us like having a clear vision of what we're supposed to be doing. We have to work in order to survive, but meaningless work wears us out. The world is filled with tired, worn out people and most of it is due to people who go through the motions of life, yet they have not found their purpose. People go through the motions of life, worn out, tired, because they have not found their purpose. Folks, your purpose will energize you. Your purpose will energize you. In fact, um, I, I read some interesting things um, dealing with the, the, the Holocaust that the Jews went through, they found that the Jews who went through severe persecution, who lived through it, they lived through it because they had, they had great purpose. They, were, they had great purpose and expectancy for, for things in life after the Holocaust. So those were the ones who made it through because they had... They had purpose in their minds and in their hearts. Even, um, even science even tells us that even certain cancer patients will survive and cancer will go in remission when the person who's diagnosed, when they have great purpose in life. When they, one doctor said, he actually, he actually does a test. He asked his patients, do you want to live to be 100? And he said, if they say yes, he has noticed that those are the ones where the cancer goes into remission and they live a long time because they have a great sense of purpose. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers of the word, when the voice of God is heard, brothers of the word, there's a word from God for everyone. Brothers of the word, because brother, you need the word. Brothers of the word. Brothers of the word.